Hello, I'm Ron Hughes, Senior Consultant with the Reliability Center in Hopewell, Virginia. I want to show you a presentation on an analysis we did using RCI's PROACT methodology and software to document the analysis. The failure occurred on a boiler feed water pump at a fossil fuel power plant up in the northeast section of the United States. The pump in question is this outboard boiler feed pump. Now what has happened is the plant is operating perfectly and this pump has shut down during operation and of course stripped the plant. So we start looking into the analysis and looking into the pump and what we find is that all the pump inboard components had become detached. Now looking at the damage I didn't expect this. The pump had lift and it could be rotated by hand. The strainer was not in place, so the Durban driven boiler feed pump was opened up and there was no damage. There was no damage to the impeller and no damage to the housing. Now let's look at how we analyze this problem. The failure event, or the reason why we're taking action, is the plant trip due to loss of boiler feed water. Failure mode, the turbine driven boiler feed pump shut down an operation. Now we ask ourselves, how can the turbine driven boiler feed pump shut down an operation? We come up with two possibilities. It's either a pump problem or a driver problem. Obviously we have a pump problem. You can see that from the picture that I've already showed you. And you can tell the size of the equipment by the millwright standing next to it. So visual inspection proves that we have a pump problem. We say, okay, how can we have a pump prop? Well, it either failed to act as a prime mover or we have loss of feed water containment. Now, we review PI data, and of course, PI data shows where it shut down, but it also reveals that the pump was operating within normal design parameters at the time of the incident under investigation. Loss of feed water containment, you look on the floor, on the pedestal, on the foundation, and we see feed water. Obviously, we have loss of feed water containment. So both of these prove to be true. So we ask ourselves, how can we have, for example, loss of feed water containment? And if you look here, you can see one of the pedestal bolts. Now here I want to point out, these pedestal bolts were not removed by the maintenance staff. They were physically taken out by the failure itself. Now this indicates that the failure is pretty powerful and something is happening inside probably of this pump. Okay? But we'll look at failed act as a prime mover. How can that be? Well, either we've got a bearing failure, a coupling failure, an impeller failure. I told you earlier we opened up the pump, the housing was fine, the impeller was fine. Okay, the bearing, we'll take a look at, at, at it. We're going to visually inspect that. And this is going to be what the bearing looks like. And what you're going to see here is you've got some moderate damage to this bearing here. This is Babbitt over here. Now, the damage that we see, there's just not enough there to cause the failure that we're investigating. So we can attribute the damage that we see to a result of the failure, definitely not a cause. So it's not a bearing failure. Now the coupling, when we look at the coupling, now this becomes a little bit more significant here because we can see severe coupling damage. It's evident. Okay? So we ask ourselves, how can we have a coupling failure? Now couplings are made up of coupling internals and coupling bolts. When we look at the internals, obviously they're severely damaged again. Very easy to see. Severe damage. Alright, so the internals have failed. And let's get the bolts. Visually inspect the coupling bolts. And we can see that we've got a problem with the coupling bolts here. Notice they're all different grades. Okay. So how can the coupling internals fail? 
Well, all components, once you get to the component level, fail for one or a combination of four reasons. Erosion, corrosion, fatigue, and overload. First thing we're going to look at is fatigue. We visually inspect the coupling internals for evidence of fatigue and we can't find any. Also, we look at the thrust shoes, the thrust shoes on the equipment. If you have cyclic loading or fatigue within the equipment, it always shows up as wear on the thrust shoes. These thrust shoes show no evidence of wear, so there is no fatigue. We also look for evidence of corrosion, which is chemical attack or erosion, which is wear. Now we see erosion on the coupling face, but in actuality on the internals, internals themselves, there is no erosion. So there's no corrosion, no erosion by visual inspection. Overload is evident by visual inspection. So how can we have overload? It's either overloaded by the system, overloaded by the pump itself, the internals, or overloaded by the process. Now, overloaded by the system, what we mean by that is we could have, for example, cold springing and piping to the equipment, causing the pump casing to see unexpected loads. We check for that. There is no cold springing or anything like that going on that could have caused the incident we're investigating. The process would be the fluid media. Now, we review the pie data, obviously, and we look for any unusual conditions and what we find is by data shows everything was operating per design parameters up until the moment of the incident. Okay, so the pump was operating fine and the process could not have contributed to it. But the pump is definitely overloaded. We do some visual inspection on the pump and this is what we found. There was significant damage to the foundation bolting, turning gear, and the coupling as a result of the pump season. In addition, all of the pump inboard components had become detached. The pump had lift and could be rotated by hand. The strainer was dislodged and no longer in place, and the volar feed pump was open and there was no damage evident other than the coupling. Okay. So pump overload, okay. Physically locked by broken pump internals or overspeed. Now overspeed is extremely unlikely, but it is a possibility. But the nice thing about pie data is that it proves that the pump was never oversped, so it never, overspeed did not contribute to this incident. Physically locked by broken pump internals, that turns out to be true. That's the physical root cause. So we visually inspect the pump, and we find a failed coupling bolt was found in the turning gear, which resulted in the pump being physically locked up. Okay, that was significant damage to the foundation bolt. All right, so it's definitely a coupling bolt that has caused this pump, pump to seize up. We actually find it. Okay, how can that be? Well, wrong bolting materials installed. When we look at but bolting's materials installed and compare that with the OEM recommendations and actually recommendations from the ASM code, we find that the OEM recommends that all of these bolts be grade eight bolts, that the pump coupling be perfectly balanced. Now let's look here. If you look at this, of course Allen heads are all grade eight. There are six radial dashes, that's a grade eight. We actually have all different types of bolts in here and all different types of grades. We have variations between one, three, five, and eight. If this was a perfectly balanced coupling, why do you need these balancing weights? These are all interesting questions. So we've got a problem with our coupling bolting here. Now what has happened is, and this is a very unusual failure, one of these bolts has come out, it's broken, and actually come out, got past the coupling guard into the turning gear. It was like a one in a million shot, but it got in there, and of course that's what jacked the pump. Okay, wrong bolting materials installed in the coupling? Well, it's a field selection error. We actually interviewed the maintenance people and the warehouse people about how these bolts were selected, 
and we found that the maintenance people couldn't find the right bolts or the correct bolts in the warehouse. Warehouse people said the correct bolts had been ordered and they hadn't been received yet. All right, field selection error, how can that be? Well, installation and maintenance procedure inadequate. No QNC inspection during installation and repair. Let me say the installation procedure is inadequate because the procedure specs for the coupling fasteners are inadequate or missing. There's no QC inspection or repair because it's not required by procedure. Now what, what we do here is obviously we look at the procedure. And when we look at the procedure, let me show you what we find. Review the installation and repair procedure. The procedure does not have any QC hold points or checks for coupling assembly, no sign-offs during torque tension procedure, and does not specify what fasteners to use in the coupling assembly. So that answers why that happened. Now, no QC inspection during repair is not required by procedure because there is no QC hold points in the procedure. Now, this gets interesting when I talk to uh, the, the managers there. I'm talking about, okay, why didn't we, you know, use grade A bolts? It's not okay to use the bolts that you're using in there, and it's supposed to be perfectly balanced. And they said, well, it's not required by procedure. And I say, okay. But the OEM and the ASME code recommend that you use grade A bolts, perfectly balanced couplings. Yeah, but it's not required by procedure. So this discussion went on for a while until I said, okay, what's a procedure? A procedure is a guideline. That's all it is. The AESME code specifically is the federal code. Now, if you get fined for this incident, they're going to fine you for violating a procedure or not following the code. And they finally understood where I was coming from. But we go over here also, installation error. It's not only the wrong bolts, they're not installed correctly. The OEM recommends that you not reuse these bolts more than once. Okay? When I got to seven times reuse on these bolts, I quit counting. And here I had to explain to them about torque tensioning and all that stuff. Reuse the bolts beyond the tension life cycle. That's exactly what has happened here. Bolts are not perfect spring. I don't care what the procedure is. You just can't keep retorquing them and keep reusing them. Bolts are not perfect springs. Torque tension procedure inadequate. Okay, because in actuality there is no torque tension procedure. It's not the amount of tension that you on the amount of torque that you put on a bolt, it's the amount of tension that you put in a bolt that determines its clamping force. And that's actually what you're measuring is the slip resistance of the thing or contact surfaces for the fastener assembly. Okay, now let's go up and look at the bolt failures. Uh, obviously we got bolt failures because of the wrong bolts that are installed. We've got the mixture of bolts, and you say, how can I have a coupling bolt failure? We're back to erosion, corrosion, fatigue, and overload. We look at the bolts, and there's, you know, some erosion that can be accounted for by the fact that the bolts have been stripped. There is no corrosion, there is no fatigue, but the bolts are definitely overloaded. So how can the bolts be overloaded? Bolting materials related, continued physically locked by broken pump internals. That means the logic from that point on is exactly the same. So if we look at the overload condition and we look at the bolts, this is the reason why they failed. We start looking at the hardness and proof loads by grade. There's a big difference between a grade 1, a grade 3, a grade 5, and a grade 8. Those that are below grade 8 level, of course, can't carry the same loads as a grade 8. So that answers that side of the tree. All right, now let's go up here, and we're going to look at the driver problem. All right, now how can we have a driving problem? Either we've got a turbine problem or a turning gear problem. 
The turning gear problem is, is evident, but we do look at the steam chest and we inspect that just to make sure it didn't have anything to do with it. And the steam chest is fine. When we inspect the turning gear itself, well, we visually inspect the bowl of feed pump drivers for any evidence that either or both have caused the pump to shut down an operation, and this is what we find. The electric turning gear motor was found torn off the unit, and the teeth on the clutch, engagement, and bull gears were found damaged. And we'll take a look at these. Here's the clutch. You can see that it's worn. And if we look at the gearbox itself, you can see where it's been torn off. And we'll look at the bull gear, or the small gear. In this case, this is the engagement gear. You can see that the engagement gear's got three teeth missing. Okay? So we asked again, all right, how can we have a turning gear problem? Well, it's either the turning gear engages an operating pump, or the turning gear overspeeds the pump. Again, this is very unlikely and very easy to disprove with pie data. But the turning gear engaged an operating pump. Now, how do we know that? Because, of course, we found the bolt in there. All right, so how can that be? Well, the operator either purposely engaged it, physically engaged by an external load, continued coupling failure, and this is the bolt, engaged by the dynamic loads of the process. This was kind of fun to play with. We actually took a new engagement gear, chucked it up in a lathe, ran it up to its operating speed, passed its operating speed in its correct rotation. We couldn't get the engagement gear to move by dy dynamic loads of centrifugal force. The only way we can get that engagement gear to move would be like the Teflon pin that pushes it into place. Pump internals. Continued coupling bolt failures, again, that means the logic's the same. Or the foundation bolts were sheared. We found foundation bolts sheared, but that didn't lock up the pump. All right, so it was physically engaged by an external load source, the coupling bolts. Okay, so what have we got here? Let's expand this. This is the major path to failure. Okay, because the procedure specs for the coupling fasteners are inadequate and missing, we have an inadequate maintenance installation procedure, which resulted in a field selection error on the bolts. Therefore, we have the wrong bolts installed in the coupling. As a result of that, one of the bolts comes out and locks up in the turning gear, and we have broken pump internals. That overloads the pump which results in the coupling being failed in a failed condition due to the coupling bolts, which caused the pump to fail to act as a prime mover for pushing water. That resulted in the pump problem. It caused the turbine driven bowler feed pump to shut down an operation that resulted in the plant trip due to loss of boiler feed water. Well, that's a pretty simple analysis. Didn't take that long. This actually only took a couple of days to do. And we're going to be showing you more examples of different types of failure in the future. So don't hesitate to come back and check again and look for other types of failures. Thank you for your time.